How is your financial home doing? May here of 2023. How is your financial home doing? Because here's what Bloomberg reported. Um, let's take a look at this, uh, uh, Jordan, on my screen. Here we go. Almost 90 million Americans struggle to make ends meet. About 38.5% of American adults, or 89.1 million people, faced difficulty in paying for usual home expenses between April 26 and May 8th, according to the latest household study. Budgeting is the most annoying thing for people to do because it forces yeah. you to look at your bank statements. It forces you to categorize your expenses. Yeah. It forces you to categorize it between wants and needs or unnecessary. Yeah. It forces you to, to identify what your habits are because what you value, that's where your money goes. Yeah. One of the things that helped me during, uh, uh, during my late 20s was I had student loan debt. I had my car note. I had credit card debt. And I had some other debt that I had to take care of uh, for my extended family. And it was just a lot, a lot of money coming from different places coming out of my account and there was more money leaking out than more money coming in. Yeah. So what I ended up doing was I took out a nice fat loan. So now I paid everything off and I just had one loan to worry about. Correct. So do you think someone in, in you know, it's consolidation loan. Could, yeah, someone could actually benefit from taking this route as long as you have decent credit going this route. So that way you can pay off, you know, consolidate your high, yeah. de you know, high debt, being able to lower the interest rates. And this also paying off all this debt from multiple places will also increase your improve your credit score. Um, and also, if you take a, a nice loan out and you have some extra cash, why not be able to invest in educational skills that mm -hmm. you can obtain so that way you can create yep. a side hustle or a yep. side business? Yep. Would you agree that? So the yeah. short answer is yes. Yes. But there's also a downside to it. Okay. So the short answer is yes because now you eliminate a credit utilization rate from your credit cards yeah. and you combine it to a personal loan. So therefore, your credit card utilization rate drops, which increases your your credit score. Now here's the flip side to it. Ba based on this article, check this what this article says. Many households are resorting to credit cards or loans to cover the expenses with over 25 million households doing so, reflecting an increase from the previous year. However, this reliance on credit cards possesses additional concerns as the average interest rate of this debt now exceeds 20%. So here's the danger. The, the danger is that temptation again, once you get the consolidation loan taking care of all the credit cards, What's the temptation? To charge those credit cards all over again. Yeah. That, that's the temptation. Yeah. So here's a solution. Put those credit cards, cup of coffee, in the freezer. Okay? Yeah. And so the temptation for you to use the credit cards, you get, what do you got to do now? You got to take it out of the freezer. You got to wait for it to defrost. And hopefully by the time this thing defrosts, you lost the emotional desire to purchase whatever it is that you're purchasing. Because most purchases are emotional. 1, and so the moment you start invoking more logic to your financial decision-making process and remove emotion from it, the more you're going to be in a better financial position. And, and going back uh, uh, off of that, I don't think I'd be able to do the coffee, the coffee mug in, in the freezer. I think that automatically just defreeze it and start swiping. I had to leave my credit cards back home in Chicago. Okay. I gave my mom my credit cards. Like, mom, hold on to these. Don't give them yeah. to me. <laughs> if I call you, don't give them to me. Don't hand them to me. When I come back and I there need it. Go. I will use it, but in Texas, I need to be able to just use whatever I have in my banks. That's right. Yeah. By the way, some stats here. Now, I would add here too as well. Ask a pay raise from your employer. Mm. What do I got to do to get a pay raise? What do I got to do to get a promotion? Why? Here's the downside though. Average pay raise in 2023 per Fortune magazine is 4 to 5% increase. That's it. Social Security, if you're on Social Security, if you're older, is up to 8.7% in 2023. The largest increase in Social Security since... Uh, from 40 years ago. So the Federal Reserve again meets June 14th to possibly raise interest rates again for the 11th time in a row. Uh, let's, let's take a look at this, uh, this inflation chart. Uh, Jordan, can we take a look at my screen real quick? This is where inflation is at. It was at a high of 9.1% in June of 2022. It's starting to go down. So we've had 10 consecutive Federal Reserve interest rates. Every time they've met, they've increased interest rates. Guess what's starting to happen to the interest rate, or excuse me, the inflation rate now? It's starting to go down. So this is, this is looking good. This is looking very favorable, okay, in terms of how inflation rates are starting to go down. So what happens is when the, the Federal Reserve up here, they're raising rates, raising rates, raising rates, there's a lag in when this actually is going to affect the economy. They say it's about a six-month lag. So they're thinking that June 14th, they're not going to raise the interest rates again, which is good, which means that mortgage rates will be stable, credit card rates will be stable, Loan rates will be stable, 
right? So that's the benefit of it. But now what you got to do then is got to find a pay raise that's going to increase your income above inflation. Because if you got a pay raise of 5% and inflation is still 5%, you're not getting anywhere, uh, anywhere ahead with your money. So the third thing, if your, your employer, your boss is not giving you a pay raise, you got you to increase your income. What Milton and I have done is gone in business for ourselves and many, many others. Man, bro, last night, over 86 people were at our office looking to make more money. 86. Last night, 86. We had to split our, our rooms. And by the way, we don't advertise our workshops at our office. This is all by word of mouth. This is all by referrals. And over 86 people at our office last night looking to make more money, looking to make ends meet because their boss is not giving them the pay raise, so they got to go out. So starting your own side business is no longer a luxury. It's simple as finding a big problem and creating a solution to make people's lives easier or better. So, you know, you know, oftentimes, you know, people say, oh, it's impossible to start a business. It's possible to start a business. Listen, you look at the two guys right now on the Millionaire Goals podcast without a college degree between the two of them. I had a 2.2 GPA in high school. Do you remember what your GPA was in high school? A 2.3, 2.4. Somewhere that just knows yeah, to stay eligible. Yeah. Shout out Provisor West. But we've shifted through entrepreneurship and invoking the right values and principles of capitalism to create our own economy, to have economic mobility. It's not reserved for us. And by the way, this is annoying for a lot of people when they hear this message. You know why? Because it forces you to improve. It forces you not to be lazy anymore. It forces you to put that video game controller down and pick up a book, pick up a manual, and learn how to pick up a new skill to start a new business. And by the way, there's so many different businesses. If I go to different cities, you can create a community of entrepreneurs getting together, create a mastermind group, a meeting for entrepreneurs to get together. But here's what many people take for granted in their youth, though. Their ability and capacity to earn income. You're in your, you're in your 20s. You're in your 30s, right? You're in your 40s right now. What you take for granted is your ability to make more money. Because why? Because I run across people in their 50s, 60s, 70s. You know what the wish they had? I wish I had my youth to know what I know now back then. I hear that all the time in my office. So don't take that for granted. And when you start making money, you don't owe anybody, financially speaking, anything. Yeah. Now, it's in your kindness of your heart, do it. But you don't owe them anything. And you need to communicate that. You need to share that uh, to them when you start, or start making more money. And by the way, it doesn't need to be, you, know, you don't need to be a millionaire to have the conversation. You have a job. You know, going on a date. All right, by the way, going on a business lunch. So when I go out and business lunch, hey, guys, by the way, we still do it. Hey, I'm 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 paying for this bill. I got this. Last night we we're having cigars after our meeting last night. Hey guys, I got I got the I got the sticks, you get the drinks. Right? So so it's it's simple as that. Or I got this. And next thing you know, when I went to go pay the bill, oh, what happened? Where's the bill? No, so and so, Jesse Moon, he paid for it all. <laughs> Jesse Moon. You know? We uh, argue over the bill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's when you know you're hanging around the right people. When you're arguing who pays the bill, yeah. not who d isn't adding their contribution to the bill. Yeah. That's when you know you're hanging around the right If you're hang having that conversation, you shouldn't be having dinner together. Because now you've got unmet expectations. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.